My name's Will Googe, I'm an ultra runner from London, England, and I am planning to take on a run around the whole of Lake Como in Italy in under 24 hours. There's a part of me that's never concerned by distance, but I was genuinely concerned. It always gets to a point where physically you're gonna be fucked, and I think that's when the mental side of things come in, and that's probably where I do the best. Okay, so tomorrow it's only gonna get up to 29, which is okay. This is beautiful. I went to Lake Como back in October 2020, and when I go to a new place, I just love running to explore it, and obviously Lake Como was gonna be one of those places I just put my shoes on as soon as I arrived and got out the door. I actually PB my half marathon when I was running around and there still is that elevation. I get that buzz when I run somewhere new. As soon as I finished, I went on Strava and I started creating a route. I was like, I wonder how I wonder how far this whole lake is round. So I made the route then and there and since yeah, since October twenty twenty I've been like, I'm gonna run around this whole thing in twenty four hours and now now the time has come. Usually when you do these things, they're on a closed course and it's meant for runners. That's not the case tomorrow. So just be mindful of cars. If you're hanging out on the side of the road, don't get hit by one. And try not to hit any other cars with your car. Yeah, Italian drivers are pretty crazy. So, so I don't know if I can do it in a lot of time. That's why I'm excited about it. But I'm still, I'm still confident it's going to be done whether, whether I do it in the time or not. So. In terms of tomorrow, we're going to start at 8, at 8 a.m. You know where the start line is, right? I just think we'd be there by 7.30. Those that are the crew. Just keep the energy up, be positive, and give him as much encouragement as possible. And uh, even if you're not a runner, like, if you want to step in and, like, entertain him for a minute, and talk, and just, like, just keep it positive and keep it real energetic, and that's going to help him more than anything. So. The last 25 miles around at, at what time will he So, run? I mean, he has 24 hours to do it. With this elevation, I think it'll take between 20 and 24. Okay. I feel like I know something's yeah. coming. And I'm just thinking about the goal at hand. And I'm looking forward to it. Shit's getting real. It was all kind of exciting, though. Like, we're all in the, the place together. There was good camaraderie. There was everyone chipping in with their ideas. That bit's exciting, it's tension, but good tension. And it's like, it's about to happen. All that, all that planning, all that build up, like now tomorrow's go time. Well, good night. When I woke up, I was already in that zone. It's like a, a calm or a focus where I'm in the zone, I'm ready to go. I didn't know if I could make it, and that was truthful. I didn't know if I could. I was always gonna go the distance, but that, that distance within 24 hours is aggressive for me. You're pushing it this time. Yeah, the first marathon was super straightforward and in my head I'm thinking, don't go too fast and for the first time, do things, do things to plan.
somewhere beautiful this morning. The most beautiful place I've ever run was the northern coast of California. Yeah. And I ran a marathon there. And the whole time I was just like... <laughs> and I hope that you will find as beautiful as California, Lake Como. Well, Where no, I was <laughs> saying, I can't... This is even more beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. I've never had Shirley Creamy before, but she took lead role real well. So with them there, it's like, it takes off a massive level of concern for me because there's so many moving parts and so many people, like when someone should run me, if they should leave me alone, getting things ready for me when I come into a pit stop and I don't have to be concerned about the crew or any of the extra people. Yeah, we'll get it to, we can yeah. trade it out in a minute. Yeah. Just mix another one. Mixing up electrolytes. It's really hot out today. And Will is sweating a lot. And we finally found some ice. We've been searching for a while. Nothing is cold. And now I think we can just keep him a little cool to get him through the hottest part of the day. He'll be golden. I think we're still. It's like almost four, but I think it's still going to be hot for a few more hours. So we can't let him blow up yet. We got to get him to the night. When he was six and a half hours in, he was six hours ahead of schedule. It's amazing, he's doing really well. Come on, come on, Will! The heat now is probably going to slow him down, uh, which is smart for him to slow down because he can't really zap himself too much. He's got too far to go. But he seems to be pacing himself well. He's got a great attitude about it, so I think we're in a really good spot. The race hasn't even started yet, I'm not 50 miles. They say in like 100 miles it doesn't, the race doesn't start until 50, so I was just relaxed. I kept getting updates on how far I was ahead and I was like, that's great. I think it'll get weird probably uh, late this evening, like midnight onward. Uh, energy will probably drop, like less people around, it's dark. It's, that's when the real hills start. So he'll start experiencing a lot more uh, having to climb and descend. So I think at that part it'll probably get a little more challenging for sure. Me to call him. No, no, no. Did you say there's anything about you that's extraordinary or special or different? No. Nothing. I think the only thing that differentiates me to anyone else is the fact that I will go and do it. Or I'll think about doing something and then I'll go and do it. Not because I'm talented, but because I'm basically not going to give up until I do it. If that's special, then sure, but I just, I don't think people give themselves enough credit. That's what I question in this. It's not that I'm special, it's that I question why other people wouldn't try. You can give up, sure, but I think when you're out there and you've said you're going to do something, it's a lot, it's a lot harder. And once you've taken that first step of doing a challenge, your first marathon, your first half marathon, whatever, it's way harder to stop. Oh, this 
gonna be wild. Yeah, this is this where you're laying here? Yep. When it got to that last section, when I was thinking about the nap, Robbie was like, "Let's not do, let's not do recharge. Let's just go straight in with ignite." <laughs> when I put that in, I was laying on the floor. <laughs> it's just like an intense like focus, and <clears throat> it's not like you feel all of a sudden awake, but there's like there's like energy, and it's like you need to, you need to use it. <laughs> Let's go. Left, forgot everything I needed. <laughs> I didn't have water bottles, I didn't have my poles. Like I just went. Unfortunately for me, the way I found purpose was my mum passing away and finding something that I needed to do. You might do a second loop. No. <laughs> so I basically put everything I had into running because I had to. It was, I was forced into that. But finding purpose, man, is, it's hard. As human beings, we like our comfort zone and we sit there. People don't like getting outside it, trying something new that they might love. I guess it's like the most prominent state of runner's heart. You just get back to the rawest form of you when Fucking nothing else matters. You really, really, really want to stop because it hurts, but you know you can't, and so you just carry on going anyway. And I guess that's where you get the most amount of growth. So this, for me, was growth. When it got to 60 miles, that was cool because that's 100K. Getting to 94 miles was cool because I'd never done, I, didn't, I did 93 before. So that was like, wow, getting to 100 miles, basically at the end. Everything I've done, I haven't, I've felt like it's been done before. The fact that no one had run around that lake, that was like a different feeling for me. It was like, it was quite special and because of people out there that had flown out from the States, UK, people in Como, like, it was, I was like, this is fucking sick. <laughs> In any scenario, the people make it. The best moments are always shared experiences. Thank you.
Doing that adventure as a crew, unreal. It was a privilege. Yeah, I really did like all of it. 